Well, hello there, humans of these other things, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to Channel Line Bush. Today's video is all about the VK7201. Whenever there's an update or a patch or something really gets changed in game, I'll get a bunch of videos that will feature one particular tank, and it's a great barometer for what's being driven well or what's really showcasing some new gameplay mechanics. Uh, and in the case of the recent update 10.3, the VK7201 has been the leading light in my inbox. Uh, I've got two games I'm going to feature here for you while we talk about this tank. And the first one is an outstanding game, but the second game is going to boggle the mind. And I don't think either of these games really would have been possible prior to update 10.3. And the huge, although somewhat subtle changes that have turned this into a genuine powerhouse of a tier 10 heavy tank. The key bit of kit here is the improved suspension. It's given you about 25% more base traverse, uh, which is massive, and it's upped your average speed. Its crossing rate is better, which means you accelerate better. Uh, it's, it's just basically changed the lane that you're gonna drive this tank in. It's very much like that T71 where Although it's not as mobile as that, it's got that big buffy armor and you're able to move it quick enough that in situations like this, where they think they can pin with AP and you move the tank around a bit, it just means they've then got to go to promo to get the job done. So you'll quite often get a sneaky bounce that you don't deserve or it lowers the overall damage in because they've got to use a less damaging form of ammunition. This ties in with your aim time being decreased, your base aim time, and your overall DPM going up. So you've become better at brawling. And I don't know if you know this about Blitz, but if you've got a big heavy tank that can brawl well, then you can really dominate in public games. And that's what seems to be happening a lot of the time with the VK7201. Now, I drove about 10 games in it today uh, and had horrific teams, won three but averaged over 3,000 damage in it and with a lot of blocks and was the last man standing. And I just did simple heavy tank stuff with it. Took it to the heavy flank, pushed people, went really well. I'm going to show you two games now that really illustrate this play style. Now, the simple thing with this tank, and it's funny that I did a video on it before 10.3, is that the upper glacis and lower glacis are so strong in terms of armor thickness and so well angled that you can do this weird thing where you poke the nose out in this tank and you actually invite people to shoot the nose. Then you get a bounce and then you push forward and deliver your payload. Where this is really going well at the moment is as you push forward and get involved, you then do this wonderful thing where you start, you know, like jiggling and wiggling and taking a lot less damage. Think of it this way, if it takes a 62A, um, an extra 20% of time to get around you, that cuts the ability of him to have clear shots by a considerable margin. And that can be the difference between getting a reload in and not getting a reload in. Clearing a target and not clearing a target. And although you have gone from 960 base alpha down to 900 base alpha on your HE, you can still wallop like that. You can do big chunks of damage when you want to with that HE. 900 HE on a heavy tank is just fine for doing the business against leopards, sides of projettos, bat chats, that kind of thing. And the gun, look, it's not super accurate. I mean, no one's pretending that it's super accurate. It's a 0.362 dispersion heavy tank gun that fires 600 alpha but you do have 85 millimeters of HE pen. And that means the asses of a lot of tanks are gonna be available for business. Like, you can really put the herd on with this thing. I found it very, very interesting in the second game we're gonna see, and the second game we're gonna see is insane. It is absolutely insane. You have to watch that second game. Stay tuned for this one. It is gonna be absolutely redonkulous. It's interesting to me how Wargaming have almost decided to try to 
lower the alpha across the board. And I like this because encouraging people to, like, put it this way. If you drive a 62A, we're going to use this tank again. You have to spend a lot of time on target to live your damage. If you drive a VK7201, you don't have to spend as much time on target to deliver your damage. You drive forward, you shoot, you pull back. However, you drive forward a little more now than you used to, which means you spend a little more time engaged in actual gameplay. And I think that's one of the things that usually steers me away from heavy tanks is the whole concept that you have to spend so much time engaged doing nothing, waiting for a reload. And because of that lack of mobility, it's not as much fun. And you see, this is a very good drive by the Riz. Straight through the middle of the map. Six and a half K. Fantastic mastery. Lots of damage. Did really, really well. What you're about to see is just absolutely crackerjack. Uh, this is a game from his royal fadness. Not fatness. Fadness. Now, Fatness had been out of the game for a while. Very good player, but he had left the game and came back after update 10.3 to see what the changes had done to his beloved VK7201. And this is the game that he had. <laughs> it's going to be wild. I don't know what that was. That was like a sacrifice to the gods, a homage to... Uh, dark side of the moon, just doing the business, whatever. Um, this is going to be a roller coaster ride. Now, what I like about this is there's something to be said with just following the team. This is not the traditional heavy map, heavy route, but he has followed the team. And just as well he has, because otherwise these guys over here would be completely overwhelmed. He's putting shots into that flank on the right. Now, this is an improved DPM tank, but it is not... It is by no no means a strong DPM tank. It's better than it was, and it is more engaged in actual gameplay than it was, but it is not... Like, we're not looking at a Strev K here. This isn't, you know, the Leopard 1 of heavy tanks. This is a traditional German pie-eating heavy. It is going to soak up some damage... And it is going to basically make a living by doing nasty things like that to bad tanks. Now, obviously, they've strong-sided the medium route. And the guys in town, well, I don't know really what they're doing. They've taken a long time to get here. And they've been way too slow. They've probably stopped along the way, had a sandwich, a bite to eat. Uh, stopped in at Arnie Robbins and... Um, you know, fancy, fancy to slice a tea cake. I don't know, but things are looking absolutely diabolical. Hello, we'd like to talk to you about your extended warranty. And this is where you can see this brawling mobility play style really comes in. Oh, hello. Watch how many times he just doesn't take damage or takes less damage because he manages to just move the tank around enough that he can negate a shot or make them take longer before they start shooting and fatness does this really well look at him using the nose and you're going to see a crucial part here these constant he belts like massive damage he rounds into the side of these tanks and he's just turning this around look at the angles look at the way he's constantly pushing into the front of them and then lining up for the next place that's a t30 the T-30 is a tier 9 American TD that has an absolute buttocks load of pen. But that's a tier 10 gun. You're looking at 259 base pen. 310 pen on its, you know, Premo. And he just keeps wiggling and jiggling that upper glacis around and destroying the hopes and dreams. I'm really enjoying this drive. And he's already up to nearly 6,000 damage. And there's still two other tanks that are very, very healthy rolling around the desert. One of them being a 183, who has more than enough pen to do something. 
There's the 183 over there. Danger. Danger. Here comes that nose. Stick the nose up. Get a 600 damage snapshot. Enjoy the time. <laughs> like, this is wild. This is an absolutely glorious drive. See how he's going to use the nose on this hill? Watch him push it up here and force the, the 183 to just suck because he doesn't have the gun depression and he's got that rear mounted, not fully traversable turret. So he can't actually get down. And that's that armor profile. That is having such strong armor. And it is just so ironic to me that the Type 71 is the last tank left at the dance. Now, that's a huge roll. And another bounce. You don't want to be ramming this tank. And I will have you know that that 71 can play. He's an over 60% player. Well over 60%, in fact. And this tank is just doing the absolute business. These little adjustments, the ability to traverse just a little bit quicker. I mean, 25% is not little. And max rolling doesn't hurt either. I felt so bad for him here. I didn't know the result. I was watching this and I'm like, oh my God, he has stuffed this shot up. And he's the he's for the all the marbles. If he gets this, he wins a 9k and a full rest. And oh shit. I was sure this was ending in heartbreak. But he stayed cool as a cucumber. Gets the upper glacis behind lower glacis behind the tank in front of him. The carcass reloads, switches to the heat, and sends it home for a seven rats. 9.6k damage monster palooza game the vk7201 it really has become such a viable option for you if you want to get your heavy on uh i'm bushka please remember to like the videos and subscribe stay safe on the battlefield and until next time bye for now and well done fatness